Mr. Wicker's Window by Carly Dawson, Chapter 4, Part 2. A table with a wooden tub and dishes stacked nearby caught Chris's eye. Buckets of water stood beneath the table, and presently Becky Boozer took off a small pot of steaming water from a hook above the fire, poured it in the tub, and dipped cold water from one of the buckets into it. What a system, Gareth thought as he watched Becky busy with her dishes, thinking of the neat white kitchen he knew at home. Aloud, he said, If you had a little wooden trough that led from that tub out through the window there, you could pull out a bung when you were ready and the water would run outdoors, which saved you carrying that great tub about when you were in a hurry. Becky Boozer rested her soapy hands on the edge of the tub and looked at him admiringly over her shoulder. I wouldn't have ever have thought of it, she said. By the look of you, never in this world. You have brains, young lad. That's what you have. A better idea than that I never heard. Indeed, it's just what I've been a-needin' since years, and that simple I might have thought it out myself. I shall set Master Siley to work on it when he comes. He's right handy with tools, is Ned Siley. At that moment, a short knock sounded on the back door, and in an instant change came over Becky Boozer. It was impossible to imagine anyone as ponderous as Becky could be coy. But at the sound of the knock, that is what she became, wiping her hands hastily on one of her many petticoats. She pushed and pulled at her hat, which remained immovable. Straightened her fichu, and smoothing her dress, she minced her mooled bulk to the door with a welcoming smile. A little man, scarcely higher than Becky's barrel waist, with a rolling sea guide and a twinkling blue eyes, bounced into the room and straightened up it on tiptoe towards Miss Boozer's blushing cheek. Chris, behind the open door, had not yet been perceived. Come, oh, Bucky, my love, shouted Siley, the sailor, in a good home at roar. How can I start the day right through without a kiss from my boozer? Bucky blushed and simpered and cast down her eyes. Get along with you, Siley. What a way to behave, she admonished, delighted in the bath. See? There's company here. She pushed her suitor off with an elephantine shove of and gestured to Chris. Chris was feeling the contagion of laughter catching up, up in him again at the scene he had watched and was glad when the suitor turned and came over to where he sat. A visitor, eh? Well, well, off a ship? No, no. Becky put it in quickly and gave Chris a look. No, the, he's a friend of my master's from... She searched her mind. From another part of the country. He got here last night and slept late, as you see. Indeed and indeed, said the sailor, settling himself comfortably, and as if for a long stay in his chair, and observing Chris through his keen blue eyes. Well, young man, announced genially. I am a sailor, he said, and stretched out a hard brown hand. Christopher Mason, Chris said in return, and they solemnly shook hands, taking account of each other as men do when they meet. I shall sit here, Mr. Specky, by your leave, Sally called out as Becky Boozer were a mile away, to keep this lot company, as it were. So you shall, he announced warmly, smiling broadly, wrinkles of pleasure at the corner of her eyes. And could I tempt you with a morsel, Master Sally? Ned Sally appeared to consider this invitation for all sides before he gave his reply, cocking his head on one side like a parrot as he reflected. Finally... He answered. How could I refuse when I know your fame as a cook? He said with a smile at Becky and a wink at Chris and put his horn, forefinger, and thumb the distance of a thread apart. But a crown, Master Specky, morsel, a taste, just to pay my respects to your art, as it were. And then such a commotion took place in the kitchen. Chris watched flabbergasted as Becky set before Siley a meat pie, a large cheese, Fruit preserves, two kinds of bread, cakes and cookies, latest tarts and pickles in jars. And with a beaming smile, Becky drew from the ca a cask a jug full of ale, which she set down on the table with a thud. The morsel, Master Siley, she asked, adding in a toxic tone, try just a taste to please me. Ned Siley, his eyes winking with anticipation and smacking his lips, attacked the meat pie and the cheese, torts and pickles with a will. Here, try this, he urged Chris, heaping the boy's plate as lavishly as his own, and the two sate in silence and gusto while Becky stood with by with roses and feathers bobbing. 
You need to keep your strength up, Ned Siley, she admonished, for it is a hard life that you lead, she warned him. Ned paused long enough to swallow. Ah, that it is, that it is, he agreed, wagging his head, champing his jaws and digging into the food. A hard life as a sailor, Ned said with a effort at sorrow, which failed signally, and he took a great draught of the ale. After a while, Sidley slowed, wiped his mouth with his hand, and leaned back in his chair, rolling a dazed eye at the anxious fate of the waiting Becky Boozer. Mr. S. Boozer, he announced, I'm a new man. He heaved a sigh of repletion. Ah, you have saved me again. Ah, Mr. S. Becky, what a treasure you are. Becky curtsied and giggled. <laughs> Fabulous hat shaking as if it were with a secret all its own. This then a bell tickled Tee! at the end of the generation. That will be the master, Becky said, busting away. Then she turned. I shall be back, Master Siley. I pray you do not leave. Chris seized his opportunity. Uh, please, Master Siley, he asked, leaning across the empty plates in his interest. Why does she wear that queer hat? Master Siley cocked an eye at the boy before him, picked comfortably at his teeth with an iron nail which he took from his pocket, and loosened his belt buckle. Ah, he said, so you've not heard. Quick then, I shall tell you, for that is truly a tale. The sailor stretched back in his chair, one hand clothing the mug of, an, of ale. Their short nose and red wind barren cheeks seemed to... He heard the joke with his eyes as he finally leaned forward across the table with an air of conspiracy. Mr. Wicker's Window by Carly Dawson, Chapter 4, Part 2, End.